In this video, I'll show you what I've learned about using the Goen Analysis Oscilloscope on the Tang Nano 9K FPGA board. This is a tool for viewing signals inside FPGA designs, somewhat like being able to attach oscilloscope probes to internal signals. The GAO, as they call it, is part of the educational version of the Goen IDE. The user manual on this was not very helpful to me. Maybe this video will help you get started. First, thanks to Jesse Schock for his video on this. I'll put a link below, but I'll be doing a few things differently. I'll use the GAO to examine signals in the Goen SRAM demo that I presented in my last video. I'll put a link to it below also, and you can look at my channel for other videos on the Tang Nano 9K. The first step for success in using GAO was to switch from Linux to Windows 10. I'm not very happy about this, but now both GAO and the Goen programmer actually work. Installation on Windows was standard and simple. I downloaded version 1.9.9 beta 4, the educational version, from the goensemi.com website. See my video on getting started with the Tang Nano 9K for more information on how to find it. This is the Goen IDE, and specifically you can see here exactly what version I have. I downloaded a single zip file from the Goen Semi website, and it contained the IDE, the programmer, and GAO, and they all worked together. There was no need to download anything else. Start with a project that's already good enough to successfully build and download to the FPGA. This is my uh, SRAM demo. And then to use the GAO, the first step is to go to File, New, and create a GAO config file like so. And then it'll ask you for some things here. So stay with standard, do not use light. If you use light, you have no control over triggering and it's nearly useless. So I'll say next, and then you need to pick a name. It can be anything. I'll just leave it as the default and then finish. And then to configure the, the uh, GAO, you double click on this and it brings up this fairly complicated set of choices. The first thing we'll do is go to capture options and and you have to pick the clock that you're going to use to basically determine when signals get sampled. And if you've got one master clock in your design, that's good. Pick it. For me, it's just CLK. And you can find signals by type, typing them into this name and then it'll search for things that match. So that makes it easier. So I'll say OK and rising edge is fine. The storage and capture amounts, uh, I find I cannot increase them. And the reason for that might be that I'm already using block SRAMs. The, this capture mechanism needs block SRAMs also. And for some reason, it can't use all of them. I don't really understand that. The next thing we'll do is add some, some signals to display when we have a trigger. So I'm going to say add, and then once again, use this search facility. So first, adder. I want to find the address that's going into the memory, my SRAM. So I'll pick it. And then let's see what else would be good. How about data in search, pick that. And data out. And finally, for now, write enable and pick that. So now these are signals that will be displayed when we have a trigger. Next, we have to configure the trigger. So you go to trigger options and you've got all these trigger ports. You have, so you've got 16 of them, you have to use at least one. If you double click on one, you can click on this plus and you can search for a signal that you want to use to trigger on. And I'm gonna search for WRE, my right enable, and pick that same signal that I chose to display and then say OK. And now you can expand this and you can see what signals associated with this trigger port. Next, you have to make it do something. You have to use a match unit to make it do something. So if you double click here, then you have to pick a trigger port. So trigger port zero, the only one you've got. And then it automatically shows you the, the variable that you can trigger on. And this menu here sort of determines what operations you can trigger on. So by default, what it wants to do is to trigger on when a signal has a particular value. But if you change this to basic with edges, you can also um, trigger on the rising edge of, of your signal, which is what I want to do. And you type that by entering an R. So then we'll say, OK. 
and that configures this part, but we're still not done. We have to go over to expressions and double click, and we have to tell it to pay attention to M0. You can use more than one of these, and then you can create expressions that combine them, as we'll see later. So let's see, what do we do next? Control S. Don't forget to do that. It'll build old things if you don't. And by the way, if you have errors, when you do Control S, it'll show you error messages that are actually helpful. So now you have to rebuild your whole project. And you do that by saying run all. And this takes less time on my Windows computer. It's actually faster than my Linux. So we're almost done and we're done. And now you program the image using the Go and Programmer. And this pretty much worked out of the box for me, which is nice. So you click here to do the programming. And now it's programmed. Make the programmer go away. And then go to Tools and start the Goen Analyzer Oscilloscope. And this is important. Uh, always pick the middle thing, this F FT2CH option for cable. And then if you click on this button, it'll set it up to trigger every time an interesting event happens. So now it's waiting for the first interesting event. In order to see one, we have to use my program on the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is this window here. So now if I do a write, like this one here, it should trigger and we see it. So I did a write to address 3210 of value 45. And you can see these appear in the, in the display window. So now I'll maybe do a different one just to see that it isn't a total fluke. And you can see everything changed just as it should. Now, let's see what happens if I do a read instead of a write. So I can do that by using a minus R. And so the, the program on the Raspberry Pi and the FPGA work, it reads the value. But, but you might notice that the display did not change. Um, let me try a different address even. See, the address remains 32. And the reason for this is that I haven't got anything to trigger on reads. I'm triggering on write enable, and reads don't do write enables. So I need to add a second trigger and have the, the scope basically stop and display when either of the triggers occurs. To do that, we need to stop. So I hit stop there, and capture stopped, make the GAO go away and go back to here. And we had our capture options and our trigger options. And so now I'm going to use a second trigger port. So I double click and I have to add a signal that's meaningful to reads. And I have to, this took a little finding in the I squared C target that I'm using, but stream state is useful. So I search for that and add it. And so now that's associated with trigger port one. Turn on M1, double click, make sure it's trigger point port one. And then once again, it's got my, my signal here automatically. And I want to stop when it's equal to binary one, which is what it's set to, but I'll make sure. And uh, that's that. And let's see. And now here I have to change it to trigger when either M0 or M1 happens. So that should do that. And capture options, I don't need to change anything, but I forgot to do trigger position before. If you say one, it'll show you a little, like one clock cycle before the trigger occurs, which I kind of like. So now let's save the GAO file, which I can do from the menu as well as Control S. And then once again, we have to rebuild everything. So we'll wait for that. And it's done. Reprogram. Reprogramming complete, make the programming window go away. And run GAO again, remembering to pick the middle option and this auto button to get it started. And so now it's waiting for events. So go back here and let's try that read again. And this time it stops. And you can see it was at read address 40, read value zero. Let's um, write address 45 to be 0x, how about 23? And so we saw the right. And now if we turn around and read address 45, 
will see the 23 both in the display on the Raspberry Pi and in the in the GAO. Let's try two more things. If I double click on port 0, I can add a second field and I'll do data in. So now now there's two trigger variables associated with trigger port 0. So if I click here, I have to give values for both of them. And I'm going to convert this to hex. I think that was a bad idea because that turned my R into a zero. Can I put, can I still do an R there? Nope. Interesting. All right, so R for the rising edge of WRE. But now for this, I'm going to set this to, let's say, three, one. Hex three, one. And now what this should do is trigger when both there's a rising edge of WRE and the value of data in is hex 31. It acts like an and. And then daringly we'll change two things. We'll also set this counter. And what that will do is to cause this, this trigger to occur only on only every other time. So let's see if this works. So close that. Save. Rebuild everything. And that's done. So now we'll program. And that's done. Tools, oscilloscope. All right, and now we're waiting for triggers. So let's try a read, which should trigger immediately. And it does. So let's try reading something else, maybe 12 instead of 11. And that worked. But now let's try writes. And this is a write of value 5, so it should never trigger. So didn't trigger, didn't trigger, still doesn't trigger, still doesn't trigger. Now let's make it 31. Doesn't trigger because it's the first time. Second time should trigger. And it does. So now let's change the address. Shouldn't trigger, because that was the first. Change the address again, and it should trigger, and it does. So both of those features work as well. One caution, um, but let's, let's stop this first and go away. So here in the process tab, you can do timing analysis report. And if there's a, a timing error, something that didn't meet timing, uh, set up our hold time violation. Um, these will, something will appear red here. And in some cases, using the oscilloscope, I've seen timing violations with this 27 megahertz clock. Didn't happen this time, um, but you should check this just to be careful. Now I've seen that it apparently still worked even with the timing violations, but that's a pretty dodgy practice. So be careful of that. But all in all, I've found this uh, Gowan analysis oscilloscope to be a somewhat useful tool. Just use it with care. So I think I'll end the video here. Thanks for watching and see below for links.